You would. All right, we're ready to go. All right, attention class. Friends, wizards, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so we uh, would like to thank you for coming out today. You, the um, the wizarding board for the Gryffindor Quidditch team, thank you for coming out. So we are, as you know, the Gryffindor Quidditch broom optimization team. So we are experts, as you know. Um, and so I know a few of you have concerns about our Quidditch team and their performance lately. They've been similar to BYU football team. They've been terrible. Um, so we want to address those concerns. We have something for you that will help us to win. So next slide. <laughs> yeah, the uh, battery's not included. Um, so the problem, Harry must stay on his broom. Um, despite bludgers, Malfoy hitting him, Snape's jinxes, and just terrible flying sees Harry Potter. The solution, or the goal I should say, is this little snitch. The solution is a self-stabilizing broom. Now our other experts will tell us about that, but just quickly, these are our definitions of degrees. So upright is uh, zero degrees, upside down is 180 degrees, so that'll help in our presentation. Um, so wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so, um, in order to build this self-stabilizing broom, we um, created a momentum balance, um, and the terms in our momentum balance are gravity, um, hits by a bludger, the jets that we are putting into the broom to stabilize it, um, and air resistance. So, due to the nature of these equations, instead of linearizing, we put them as they are um, into MATLAB. So, we looked at various controllers um, to prevent and we had two main criteria. The first was to stop Harry at 90 degrees. We don't want him to go further than 90 degrees because this will cause him to fall off of mm -hmm. his room. Um, and our second piece of criteria is that he needed to come back upright and not oscillate because this could cause a problem. So um, while we were developing the room, we looked at our first major problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> bad problem. So, um, for our room, we did a snakeability analysis. <laughs> um, so, this is, these are the results of our snakeability analysis. So, for our first option that we looked at was a P-only controller, which is this yellow line. And as you can see, this was not very good control. He oscillated everywhere um, and did a few spins, like you just saw in the last video. Um, our second um, try was a PI controller, and the PI controller is this green line, and as you can see, the oscillations are worse with the PI controller than they were with just the P controller. So we added a derivative term, and we tried the PID controller. As you can see, the PID controller does have good control, but it goes, the I term causes it to have slight offset, which didn't seem to be a big deal, but we decided to remove the I term because this would remove one more thing for Snape to mess with when he jinxes the broom. So we just have a PD controller, which is our optimal controller, as you can see here. Another reason we didn't have the PI controller was the PID controller was because flying slightly off um, zero what could cause nausea. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we had um, a PD controller and so we had to optimize it. So we had really three basic trade-offs here. We had initial angle, so the angle he's going to be hit at right off the bat or what he's gonna reach right after being hit. We have time to get to 20 degrees. Now, we chose 20 degrees because as you can see, Harry flies very comfortably at a 20 degree angle. Also, he isn't an actual dead weight, so it's in a wizard's nature to upright oneself once it becomes comfortable. So really the important angle to get to is 20 degrees and not exactly zero. Uh, furthermore, we had to look at how much power our jets would have to exhibit, and so um, how many kilowatts would be executed. Uh, so it ended up being that the power and the time were all pretty much uh, the same when we were looking at similar controllers, and so really we capitalized on trying to get an 80 degree angle. We figured at 80 degrees would give him enough give, because you don't want to stop right away or your body is going to be taking the full force of the hit. So you want some give without going completely sideways. So with that, you see our optimal values there, and then we were able to uh, put limits on our P and D terms. The P term is for time, anything too low and it's gonna cause, fa uh, <coughs> cause him to need more than five seconds to get to 20 degrees, but anything too fast and he'll get whiplash from getting up to 20 degrees too quickly. 
Uh, with the D term, anything too low uh, will cause him to go past completely upside down, which would just be nauseating. And then um, the upper limit will prevent him from being too close to 38 degrees. We figured was a good angle so you have enough give without getting too much force, but that's really the limit there. So to look at our effectiveness, um, we have, uh, this is on a normal broom as a complete dead weight, and this is with um, our jet bolt. Both of these were taken with shots to the head and as a dead weight, so it was the worst case scenario, so we could really test the effectiveness of our controller. So as you see here, on a normal broom, if you're hit and you don't do anything, you go about five and a half turns in two seconds. Uh, and this is theta, by the way, so um, it just keeps adding up. Whereas here, you never get past 80 degrees, and um, even at your worst hits, you are still down to 20 degrees in about three seconds. And this is just negligent flying, and so you are corrected for negligent flying in about 0.1 seconds. So we do feel confident in the effectiveness of our controller and that the Quidditch team will be able to be successful with Harry only having to really focus his efforts on simply catching the snitch instead of trying to maintain his balance. So thank you. Bravo. Woo!